Is the Steam Deck the ultimate emulation handheld? This is the question that I've been working on over the last two months, and after testing and filming over 250 games from the last 30 years, I finally have an answer. And that answer is yes. Even though I enjoy collecting and using a wide variety of gaming handhelds, I've always been on the lookout for something that could potentially be the handheld to replace them all. And if I had to pare down my entire collection to a single device, at this moment, I would pick the Steam Deck. This is a conclusion that kind of took me by surprise as I always thought that the Steam Deck would be too bulky or too heavy to be my only emulation handheld. When it comes to devices that I use outside of making content here on YouTube, I focus on several things, and not all of these are things that the Steam Deck does better than other products that I own. These would be software and support, product quality, and price versus performance. When it comes to software and support, the Steam Deck is by far the best. Since getting my original Steam Deck, I've received constant bug fixes and quality of life improvements from Valve that are easily downloaded and installed on the device itself. This flow of support from the manufacturer is great, but the real sauce is in the community support. The Steam Deck has one of the biggest user bases out of any current handheld, and with that comes a plethora of software that you can use and take advantage of. I've referred to this as feeling like you're on the winning team when discussing the differences between the Raspberry Pi ecosystem and other competitors, and I feel like it fully applies here. If there is something that you want that is not part of the default Steam Deck experience, you will probably find that someone in the community has already made it or is currently working on it. This could be things like theme support to turn your Steam Deck into a Wii or custom panel controls to adjust color and saturation. But the main benefit that doesn't get talked about too much when you buy into one of these winning products is that you have a very good chance of being able to solve any potential issue that you have with a quick search from a post from someone with the same issue. Just recently, the PS1 emulator on my device was not performing as well as it was the day before. A quick Google search brought me to a Reddit post from another Steam Deck owner talking about this problem with a copy and paste solution that I could apply to quickly solve this issue and get back to gaming. I came across a bunch of things like this while making this video where the solution was easy to find only because the Steam Deck user base is as big as it is. If this was any other handheld, these problems would have taken a lot longer to figure out. The Steam Deck also scores high marks when it comes to product quality. Even though it is pretty large, the Steam Deck is very ergonomic and it has a great set of controls. The controls on this are probably the best total package out of anything on the market today, but there are handhelds that have better individual controller components than what is offered here. The controller layout was strange at first, but I think it's perfectly suited for a broad mix of retro titles all the way up to modern ones based on my testing. To play these games, we have a large 7-inch screen. Even though I wish that Valve would have used a panel with better color accuracy than the one that they went with, this is still a great panel for gaming, and it's big enough that the Steam Deck can easily be played from a lap on a train or on a flight. Outside of those two scenarios, I think the front-firing speakers are much better than the ones used in a lot of other devices that you can buy today, and they make the gaming experience much better. And finally, at $400 for the base configuration, plus a few extra dollars for an SD card, the Steam Deck has one of the best price versus performance ratios on the market. There are cheaper devices that probably beat this out from a pure emulation standpoint, as well as devices that are price matched to the Steam Deck with 6800U processors that are more capable products, but there's no denying how much functionality you can get out of this device. This entire video was filmed on a 512GB model, but everything here is possible on the cheapest Steam Deck SKU. For that money, you can emulate all the way up to PS3 with varying degrees of success, depending on the title, with better performance as you move down the line. So far, we've seen a bunch of retro games for my testing, but I want to take a deep dive into what the Steam Deck can do, as well as provide some of my thoughts on the individual systems themselves. Before we do that, I want to talk about my current setup that I am using. I picked about 300 games or so to add to the internal storage of my Steam Deck, and I used an app called Steam Ron Manager to add them to the Steam Deck game list. I'm an advocate of curating game lists on devices like this so you don't have choice overload, so I tried to be very mindful of the games that I added. I really only went for IGN 10 out of 10 games for this list. I didn't want to waste any precious internal storage for anything less. Normally I wouldn't use a front end on a device like this, but the whole thing is so tightly integrated into SteamOS that it is much easier to go this route after you handle all of the annoying issues getting everything going. 
At this point, I can launch a ROM just like any normal Steam game, and it will open up inside the correct emulator. If I was going to have more than 300 games on my Steam Deck, I would probably go with Emulation Station because it is a much better option. To kick things off, we're going to take a look at some handheld systems all the way up to 3DS. We've already covered a few handheld systems before this, but we will jump right into GBA. This is a system that I still play on official hardware, but I think that GBA scales very well on this screen. We have small black borders on the left and the right sides of the screen that are not that bad, and the main image in the center is very sharp. Color accuracy is not that high on the Steam Deck, but you are still getting a much better picture with more vibrant colors than you'd get on a GBA, unless you did an IPS mod. I think this is a good use case for this Steam Deck, even though it seems a little silly to emulate GBA games on a device this big. Up from here, we have DS emulation, and this is also something that works out very well on this device. You have the option to choose a few layouts for this emulator, and this default one will show you the top screen as a large window, with the top and the bottom as smaller screens to the right. I like that the smaller screens are still easy to interact with because of how big our screen is. When it comes to PSP, we don't have the ideal native aspect ratio to emulate this system, so we will have some slight black bars on the top and the bottom of the screen. You can always stretch out the 16x9 image to fill out the full screen, but I think it's fine the way it is because the image that you're left with is still bigger than some 6-inch devices that are on the market. The games themselves play just fine, and I didn't have any issues testing the games that I filmed for this video. <laughs> 3DS is the last handheld system that we will look at in this section. I was pretty happy with the performance that I was able to get out of my deck, and I like how easy it is to flip between different screen layouts on the fly. Even though it does perform well, you might still run into some shader compilation lag here and there depending on the game. Now let's take a look at some home consoles on the Steam Deck. I've ordered these systems in this section loosely based on how demanding they are to emulate, and we're going to go all the way up to PS3 and Switch. Our first system is Sega Genesis, and we are using the Genesis Plus GX Wide Core, which works out very well with select games. As you can see, these retro titles can fill out the full screen, and I think it's a nice way to breathe some new life into these old games. Sega CD is another simple system that we can run with ease on the Steam Deck, even at very low power consumption. This isn't that big of a surprise because this system can run on devices that are under $50, but I still like it on here, and I like the bezel artwork on the left and the right sides of the screen. If you are interested in the small library of games available for the 32X, that system also runs well on this device. As many of you will know, the Super Nintendo is one of my favorite consoles and I've been playing a ton of games from this system on my Steam Deck. Just like Sega CD, I also like the bezels that come with this system. Since we would already have black bars emulating this console, I think it's a nice way to use that space for something more decorative. This system doesn't take a lot of power to emulate, and I was able to get very good battery life emulating this system on a few trips that I took over the last two months.
Our next system is Sega Saturn, and this is another one that runs very well on the deck. When we step into these 3D consoles, we can use all kinds of options to improve the picture quality and the rendering resolution, but I think the default settings on this work well. Dreamcast is another system that looks great on the Steam Deck. In the games that I tested here, I have widescreen hacks applied to make the games render in 16x9. This leaves us with some small black borders on the top and the bottom of the screen. PlayStation 1 works in the same way that Dreamcast does. Here we have games rendered at 720p resolution with widescreen hacks applied. This renders out the games in 16x9, which is a great option in games that are predominantly 3D based. Now we get into another one of my favorite systems to play on the Steam Deck. You have the option of rendering Nintendo 64 games in widescreen if you want, but I opted to keep them in the default settings with the console bezels applied because I like how it looks. I put a bunch of N64 games on my deck for this video and I've been having a blast revisiting them. Now we're getting into slightly more demanding systems, and these are going to be the ones that the Steam Deck starts to pull ahead over cheaper options that are on the market for emulation. Our first system is GameCube, and we have these games rendered at 2x native resolution with widescreen hacks applied. <laughs> When it comes to Wii, we are using the same emulator in the same settings. 
One interesting thing that I found out while testing this is that there are only a few devices that are cheaper than the Steam Deck that can mirror the performance that I'm seeing while testing this system. I did not have a lot of expectations for PS2, and I wasn't sure how well the Steam Deck would perform given that this system benefits from a strong CPU for more demanding games. I was having pretty good plug and play performance for PS2 games until I got to this one. As enemies came on screen, the FPS fell off, even if I had the TDP set to 15 watt. I remembered that this game can run better with software rendering enabled on some systems, and I was happy to see that it gave a big performance boost on the Steam Deck. Outside of this, you might run into some games that run a bit slow even at 1x resolution, but the vast majority of PS2 games are going to run without a hitch on the deck. so much. Whoa. Didn't mean to reminisce, folks. Anyway, ten years later... Xbox is a system that I recently added to my emulation tests and I wasn't sure what to expect from the Steam Deck. You might run into some games that outright don't work at all on the deck or run way too slow, but you should be able to find some that run without issues. This is an emulator that is still improving all the time, so this might get better in the future. Wii U was the first system where I could notice a big difference between the Steam Deck and older PC handhelds. When it comes to the game that's on screen now, we're getting about a 10 to 15% improvement in FPS compared to other AMD handhelds that I've tested. I think if we had a slightly better CPU, we could get this to run at 60 FPS. Other games run just fine.
PS3 performance on the Steam Deck is a mixed bag. On one hand, it's cool that we can even get a single game to run with a 15 watt TDP cap, let alone a few, but on the other hand, it would be nice to see what we could have done with a better CPU. I experienced audio stuttering, low FPS, and long loading times, but I still think it's cool that we can emulate some games on this. Our last system is Switch, and this is one that runs very well on the deck. I always say that you're better off with a real Switch if you want to play these games because you'll have better battery life and a cheaper device, but the Steam Deck doesn't cost that much more than a Switch. The funny thing is that we can get even better performance than the Switch in handheld mode for some of these games. That brings us to the end of this video, and I hope you understand why I think the Steam Deck is currently the ultimate emulation handheld. It is capable of doing a lot for the asking price of $400, and I think Valve inadvertently made one of the best emulation devices that has ever been created. I cannot wait to see what the future holds. If you enjoyed this video, a sub would be massively appreciated. Happy gaming everyone, Taki out.